is there anything else? I think I'm good with I'm trying to get to the end of trash, and every time I swipe, there's more stuff to talk about. I think I'm good with trash. Uh, all of my stuff next is about Nadine, so. <laughs> yeah, um, oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, let's move on to. Does he, uh, he meets Flag? Oh, wait. Right now, well, he met Flag, but we didn't really meet. Fl- he didn't really meet Flag yet. They just said hi, and we moved on, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's hi, and then they. He felt like all the cold emanating from Flag. Yeah. And I was like, "What sit- wants you? You're the heat, opposed to his mm-hmm. cold." <laughs> yeah, a couple people say that. I mean, is it supposed to mean something? So the, the fire guy and the ice guy. Wait. Right? Fire ice. So a song of fire and ice. Trash can man is cold? No, no flag. flag. Well, because uh, uh, so the, I'm reading this paragraph right here. A terribly hot hand closed over trash can man's icy one, and he suddenly felt at peace. That's a good point. Why was trash can man's hand icy? That motherfucker should have been on fire. It's still burnt. I mean, not literally on fire. I mean, hot. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's true because of the burn. Yeah. Yeah, it was healing and whatnot, or whatever it was doing. I don't know. What was it? It was like, like, lighter fluid or something from the. It was our uh, favorite, uh, our favorite flammable thing that I can't think of. Oh no! no well, Sterno no. was the dark tower. No, it, right. was, it was some kind of, it was some kind of jelly like that, though. You're right. Pear, it was like per per something on <laughs> yeah. Um, I will set you. Yeah, so uh, enter Lucy Swan. Uh, not important. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, Larry's not a nice guy, so he's like. Yeah, I like Nadine, but she hasn't given it up, so I'm just going to get it from you until I can figure this out, alright? Is that cool? I don't think... I don't think it's quite like that. I mean, I think he cares for Lucy. He's just still hung up on Nadine. Yeah, and I also don't think he was really that conscious of how hung up on Nadine he is or was, you know? Yeah. I think maybe he didn't realize it until, like, until he got with Lucy and was like, oh, why do I still care about her? Right. Um, and so why does he care about Nadine that fucking much? Yeah, good question. <laughs> Very good question. Maybe because she's so mysterious. So. <laughs> she's, you know, I guess that's one word for it. <laughs> well, she we, is uh, bitchy for no honest, reason. It gives me, so I was reading a lot of her section. I was getting, um, I was reminded of Lasher and, and his girls. <laughs> uh, We're watching the season finale interview the vampire uh, tonight. And I'm like, you know, she, like, she was also groomed pretty much. <laughs> By a demon, which is, do they have like jail for demon child monsters? I guess it wasn't as extreme as last year, but it like she was young when he first came into her life. Yeah, like a like a yeah, you know, like a um like twelve to fourteen year old, right? Wasn't I playing um Ouija board or something? I think Oh no, that's what ha- that's what happens in the show. I don't know if that happens in the book. They're playing with a Ouija board and she invites him in and then he never leaves and then she's marked and then she doesn't have sex with anybody throughout high school or college, and everybody thinks she's weird. Um, but my whole thought was, I thought he was like, just dreaming about him. What? Like I didn't think that she had ever actually talked to him or like invited him in or anything. I thought she was just dreaming about him. Yeah, I think it was more subtle in the book because that that was in the the uh, show. This came out a couple years ago. Maybe have a watch party when this is over. I'm trying to read the section. It's hard to tell, but like ever since the age of at least 16, she it's not that she was necessarily saving herself, but she knew she was supposed to be waiting for him 
but she was still willing like she was you know she said like if he had caught me i would have given it up to the boy but he didn't catch me so i was still waiting for the other man or whatever well that's what i was saying like it's she has some part there where she's like well she she gave it up to larry or you know she was fine waiting but then she had met larry and joe and now things are different but if she gave it up to larry the covenant would be broken well great where's the, what's the fucking problem that's, so go break the covenant come with your life my god well that's kind of what I, I was yelling at the book when i was reading this section i was like if you want to be a good person and you don't want to have flag associated with you then dad have sex with Larry. like you know the solution <laughs> to the problem right, but, right. Like, just, so, fix just fix it <laughs> it's the 1400s and he's some super male chauvinist who you got to be a virgin easy way to fix that get flag out of your life right now i can help you with that Mm-hmm. Anybody can help you with that. I know. Yeah, like she's kind of like Harold. Like, okay, you're making choices here. Like, you could choose a different path, and you're not. So, she's clearly like a mole at this point. I don't know to what capacity you would. I don't think she, she doesn't belong there. She doesn't even know to what capacity, though. That's why, like, I. I understand. No, she's like a candidate almost. She's making, she is yeah. making choices, but like, there's a reason why she feels so. Like, you don't just wake up and feel like I have to save myself for the dark man. You know what I mean? Like, clearly, he is putting that into her and has been doing something like since she was a young girl. Maybe so, she doesn't have a choice after all. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, she, it's, it's not. She's not like Harold at all, in my opinion. <laughs> Maybe yeah, Harold is the same as her. Maybe Har- I mean Harold's clearly being manipulated by him, right? I don't think Maybe so. All no, that Harold, has made it Harold has had this inside him, apparently. <laughs> He's always weird little brother. He wasn't evil, maniacal. What do you how is he being flag? manipulated by him right now? Maybe a flag is pouring the hate into him. Maybe. Like a That's a big assumption though. We don't know. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I'm, I. We know yeah. that flag is influencing Nadine. <laughs> I would not say Her- that flag is influencing Harold. Harold chose. To... Like didn't even influence Harold. Yeah, exactly. He just fucking like wound him up and uh, set him loose. Nobody just has yeah. a manifesto waiting to be written down, and unless they're sociopath, psychopath. <laughs> Unless it's flag right in through him. I mean, come on. Yeah, because he's always uh, stuff like that. <laughs> he's three people at least, so I feel like he's got time to spare. <laughs> flag is the one. Yeah, I dude, mean, not the writing dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point he's going to learn to run because he has to flee across the desert. Flag. Uh, oh, oh yeah. right, right. Um, Walter. I'm not sure where that fits in the timeline exactly. But I think the stand is actually after the gunslinger. Gunslinger is really? one of the first things he ever wrote. Huh. Yeah, it was like a series of short stories in, in some men's magazine or something, Cavalier or something. And then he condensed them into the gunslinger. It was like five. Each chapter was like a short story. Uh, anyway, um, he, uh, yeah, I think Harold is just evil on his own, and, I mean, God, I don't, he would have been probably murdering people if the world hadn't ended, because he's got so much hate over, uh, I mean, I get that he feels hurt over it, but, like, come on, overreact much? Well, the thing is, like, it's it's realistic. <laughs> I'm not, and I'm not well, saying that every rejected person has that feeling, but a lot of the times, in the cases of like you know, uh, well, never mind. Let me not say that. But it has happened before, where st- like a so-called rejection is the trigger for serial or mass murder. Yeah. yeah. Well, no doubt. I've relationships in general, and how many. <laughs> I would say 98% of murder has something to do with rejection. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, 
I don't know. I guess Harold's never had a girlfriend. I mean, and everything's overblown in high school. We all know that. He's just younger than I kind of thought he was, according to Larry, because he keeps calling him a little kid. He was like 17 or 18 when, when we found him. Yeah. Okay. I guess it's a little young. Than that, like 16, possibly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, we've all had a relationship and been rejected by 18. I would maybe not Harold. <laughs> I don't know. It's not it's not even about the rejection. It's just about like, unfortunately, you know, he didn't have uh, like his parents were not good parents to him. So there he doesn't have the emotional capability to handle things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know how to handle rejection. Like, like he doesn't understand uh, I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say he's, he's, he lives in a cave and he's never been out in the real world and interacted in a, in a normal way and experienced some of the things that that you know we all go through he hasn't gotten he never got a chance to get there I guess because he's an introvert and he's a nerd and he's you know in the book at least he's, well, I mean, he's fat and pimply I, I think I had my first relationship at like 17 like it's not that unusual to be 16 17 and not have a relationship and get rejected yet i think that's what i meant it's not really about the, it that it's just like no matter how old he is he won't know how to handle it <laughs> well he would get there at some point i would well maybe not i don't think harold would <laughs> yeah okay i think most people Guess. like you're saying you learn how to deal with it because you experience it and you realize it's not the end of the world and you move on i don't think harold would ever have that <laughs> Yeah, some people just never develop that level of like emotional maturity. <laughs> it's always the end of the world. We go and kill. They're called now. Everybody at the mall. They're called incels. <laughs> In incels. Involuntary celibate. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Most of the male population in high school. Jeez. Uh. Okay. Um. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, there may be some flag influence, but I think Harold's just Harold. Now, all of that to say, I do think that Nadine still has, like, she still can make a choice. I'm not saying she has no choice here at all. I just don't think she has, like, she's clearly got influence from flag. I agree with that, but I think she's realizing now that, yeah, she does have a choice and she's still just not making the right choice I, I i agree with that too i think you're right she's starting to realize like because mother abigail basically looked at her and was like oh my god it's a dark man oh no wait yeah. it's not so like she yep. knew that that happened <laughs> what the fuck was that whole thing about <laughs> it was them seeing into each other <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, Mother Abigail spent the next 10 minutes talking to people and not paying attention because she was so worried. She felt that she had missed something in that encounter. And like Nadine deflected what she, the big revelation by talking about Joe. So, then he's actually, my name's Leo and I do talk. So, na 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 na. No, I, I agree with you there. I was really confused. I was like, what does she think she missed? You saw what you saw. You know she's working or she's on the bad side. Like, what are you forgetting here? I don't understand. Yeah, yeah I mean, what else is there? I, I mean, <laughs> she's such a traitor. She has a white streak of fucking hair down the goddamn back of her head. The way that sentence head. goes, she, she's trying to figure it out. She's like, it's almost like she's she's what? I'm like, what do you mean she's what? She's bad. How hard is this to figure out? <laughs> And <laughs> right, so tell her to get the fuck out because we all know. Right, like what are you doing? Yeah. Just keep your ass, keep it moving, keep walking west. You know, just right over the mountains, you'll at see some desert. Least, you'll know you're there. At the very least, tell your people that are closest to you, like, hey, um, we need to look out for this. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. they they kind of know because when um. Someone was talking to Nick, I think, and they were like, yeah, there was some sort of confrontation with Mother Abigail and this cross lady when she got here. Yeah. I guess that's true because nobody else has probably reacted that way to Mother Abigail. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that yeah. big a thing. And then, like, the townspeople were talking about it. I was like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> everyone else is like, oh, my God, I love you. You're the greatest. And Nadine was like, hey, 
So what do you do? Also, Nadine <laughs> hasn't had any dreams about her, which is unlike all. She's of been her. faking it, right? She hasn't had one. I guess. Well, I don't. I don't think so. She said she didn't. She'd only been dreaming of the dark man and didn't realize other people had been until they talked about it. Yeah, I think she made her choices a long time ago, but now she's like, I'm not sure I did the right thing. Like she's questioning it, but. I think so. She's not. so my interpretation is is that she had a pull from something that was like this is your purpose and so she was trying to stay in line with that purpose not realizing the pull was not the side she wanted to be on and now she's the you know right she's a teacher like so, you know I think she she's a good loves... person <laughs> well she was right right yeah she got she, she... Joined the wrong side by accident, I guess is the way to say that. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, "Fuck, I can't get out of it." Which I disagree. But she could. But could. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it wouldn't be easy, but she could, I guess, maybe. And it might cost her her life to get out of it, but hey, you know, I don't even it would think be it better would than be. serving least, evil. At at this point, because she hasn't actually interacted with Flag, she's still with the good people physically. Well, that's true. Like, I like, don't think there would really be any horrible ramifications if she did, you know, get with Larry and stop would make his thinking whole about Flag. Sure. At least it's say he doesn't have backups, though. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's not a failsafe, I guess. Well, what is, we don't even know what her role is. Yeah, her yeah. purpose like why why what is he holding her for or what does he need her for yeah why does she need to be a virgin i'm like right <laughs> is this like a firstborn thing is getting all religious <laughs> is it like a virgin mary type of thing yeah but yeah pff, virgin my ass anyway. <laughs> uh that was one hell of a i'm not gonna go there one hell of a story she told him to get him to believe that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, she would make Larry's world, that's for sure. He was, he's already in love with her. He would, she'd never get rid of him. Uh, it, 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 you'd find Lucy out in a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she's just making the wrong choices, and you know, I find it interesting that uh, Leo Joe didn't want nothing to do with Harold, wouldn't even go in his fucking house, and didn't want Larry to go in there. He was begging him to come with him. He's like, don't. Don't go in there. But well, has no problem with Nadine. That, yeah. That's my issue with it. And I, the only thing I can think of is he's ignoring what he sees in Nadine because she found him and she healed him. Because she's Nadine mom? Yeah. That and I mean... That, I that. <laughs> yeah. that would make sense because it's like, it is easiest to ignore the bad things, you know, and the people closest to you. <laughs> I don't like it. Though. I like... <laughs> so who tells the story to Lucy about, like... Is it Glenn? Uh, wait, I have it right here. Um, she think uh, the the uh, what's her name got paranoid because she thought her husband was watching her even when he wasn't. Mm, uh, uh, is, is, yeah. that, is is it Lucy talking about her friend or something? And Jelaine got flaky. She thinks some guy was waiting for a bus was one of her husband's friends, and you know she's somebody's always watching her. So it didn't matter if he was or not at that point. She always thought her husband was watching, and he's like, "Are you saying Nadine is afraid of me the way that girl was afraid of her husband?" Well, she says maybe, but I'll tell you this: you know, whoever Nadine, wherever Nadine's husband is, he's not here. And I was like, "Oh, I never even thought of it that way." Well, so I, I we're, would... we're the ones, or Larry and Joe and them are the ones that are running around while are behind her husband's back, kind of. See, I more took that as like she's acting like an abused wife and like who's abusing her <laughs> flag <laughs> well right exactly yeah <laughs> but why does uh, Lucy not see that it's like Lucy sees that 
Well, Larry's not that smart, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think Lucy knows it's flag, like, though, right? It, she it, just knows it's well. No, she I just think, said no, 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 well. I don't think Lucy knows it's flag. That's why I wrote it down. Quote like, who's abusing her from her perspective? But we know it's flag. Yeah. Well, if he uh, well, it, right. So this is the end of the world, and basically there's people in two cities. So if he's not here, he's in Vegas, which means. Oh, actually, that is a great point. <laughs> Why are they not putting that connection together? <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe she is. Maybe that's what she's saying. Well, then she needs implied. to be more explicit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, wh- wherever Nadine's husband is, he's not here. So he's... Uh, well, he could be dead. Too. Well, yeah, so he would have to be in Vegas. So that's the bad guys. I like how Vegas is where all the criminals go. <laughs> I guess some things never change. Huh? Uh, but um, yeah. Um. Oh man, if somebody said to me, "I love you as much as I can," I would tell them to fuck off and get away from me and get out of my life. <laughs> I think that Lucy it, it understands the situation. Like they just met, you know. Like, come on. Yeah. She's very uh, go with the flow. Give her that. I don't know if I could be said that. I mean, I don't know. There's so much other worldly shit going on. I guess it's, it's, that's kind of minor at this point. Like, that's whatever. What I was, just... If I was her in that situation and I was enjoying his company, I would probably feel the same way. Like, who the fuck cares? At least we're alive right now, and we're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there's no point in thinking long term, because so, you don't fucking know if there is a long term. Like, right. The world just ended. <laughs> so you might have to go day by day, I guess. Yeah. But damn, it's not, she's... It's uh... definitely not something he should have said, because, like, why is it <laughs> necessary? <laughs> <laughs> he could have just said, I love you, and just stopped right there. Right. You exactly. need to, no more words. Like, come on, Larry, you're not a nice guy, are you? But that is very yeah. much a typical guy thing to do sometimes. Where it's like you didn't need to say that because you thought it. But thank you. <laughs> I would no fuck. Thank you. If you had stopped that, I love you. We'd have been all right. Now it's a whole new thing. Uh. Yeah, and then Nadine, back to Nadine and Joe. I got so used to Joe, and then he became Leo. It's weird shouldn't have done that he should have just been like my name's joe actually and then everything would have been simple um and he so yeah he falls into a trance or he was he was in a trance in a sidewalk right isn't that i remember that right should we talk about larry and harold sure <laughs> well then it goes 50 goes to uh it's basically Stu and Glenn's conversation, right? About all the end of the world stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no. no. I don't have a whole lot. And then there's some other Abigail stuff. Um, so they have. I like how this unilateral decision was Harold could not be part of the committee. Mm hmm. <laughs> No, Which is back. no, Nick sees right through people, and maybe that's part of his because of his situation. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's a lot easier to notice things when you can't talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you do much more observing, right? When yeah. when you're not just able to like. Hell, I, mean, I should... also, I'm like the people who were traveling with Harold trusted him because. He helped them get through situations and they had Fran coloring their opinions because she she trusted Harold so much. But now that they have other people who are getting fresh eyes on them, they're like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, and also, they've known, or some people have noticed that he's been even weirder, too. <laughs> yeah. Which I assume is supposed to be ever since, you know, finding out that Harold and or Stu and Fran are together. Yeah. Of course, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, yeah, and fucking what would Harold do? I was about to say, like, wow, Stephen King's ahead of his time. He's all with the what would Jesus do? I think that was before that was like a bumper sticker. 
And then they're like, no, no, no. What would Harold do? Like, oh, man. Uh, you don't really know what you're saying when you say that. What would Harold do? Uh -huh. There's almost no way to tell. Well, that's, a, that's the, the stupidly frustrating thing about Harold is like he's not wrong because all of the things that he saw him do were smart and impressive and saved them all. But it's also, you know, there's a whole other side of him that you don't want to do any of the things that he would do. <laughs> he's also yeah. turning psycho. Yeah. <laughs> if he could just be nice and helpful. I think this happens in here where he has that one moment where he's like, well, just like uh, kind, well, not really, like Trash Can Man, he never really cared to be part of his old life. But, you know, when Donald Merrin Elbert died, when he put the necklace on, like, how it has that one moment of clarity where he could have went and just became a different person and he's like, no, nah, fuck that. I picture that scene where he's like sitting at the desk and he like stops and thinks to himself for a moment, he's like, should I be a nice guy? And then it's like half a second later, nah, and then keeps writing furiously. I hate everyone and I want them to die. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is much more fun. Yeah. Die. I love the like rage. Like I just picture him in the attic with a flickering candle, and every time it flickers, it lights up the all, all the times he wrote "die" on the ceiling above him or something. And I cannot stop picturing the Harold from the new one too. It's just so good. <laughs> he's a good Harold, even though he's not fat or pimply. Right. <laughs> Are you old enough for Parker Lewis? You remember? I think I did that before. He was. I can't remember the guy's name. Hey Google, who played Parker Lewis? There are more than 60 people in the cast of Parker Lewis campaign. <laughs> Here are the first three. Billy James, Troy Slavin, and Melanie Chartis. Uh, Troy something something. Well, I guess he never did anything. I don't know, that. but I found these. Okay, stop. <laughs> um, that guy wasn't that great. But neither one of them looked like Harold in the book, so it was always weird. But the one, the new one's pretty good. He He looks... He's great with the facial expressions, conveying exactly. what you know he's thinking. So that's I'm, read picturing, the book. I'm picturing his face while I'm reading these sections because he's so good at those expressions. Like, yeah, well, like with the eyes, like the smile didn't reach his eyes. We all know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The eyes are definitely telling a different story. And there's nobody suspicious about how easily he was just like, oh, oh, you guys are together. Great. Yeah, like how, and it, he fucking practices smiling at night. <laughs> oh my goodness! Have we gotten to that part yet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I read it, so I haven't read ahead. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I know we I see like, that in the show. That's what I meant. I just couldn't remember. Yeah, I think that's one of the last things he does is uh, practice smiling. Yeah, like he writes in his ledger, and then he practices smiling. Okay, okay. And he's getting so good at it now. I'm like, yeah. that's uh, uh. He's I not, though, because people are noticing that all he does is fucking smile. For Larry, man, what a, what a difference between the guy he was coming to see and the guy he met. Like, he left that meeting paranoid that Harold was spying on him. So he, he, like... I mean, if that is a change the right way. I was going to say, if that isn't a testament to how, like, maybe, well, I don't know. I was going to say how not, or how incon, or not, oh my God. Harold is being pretty obvious, although he doesn't think he is. But at the same time, it seems like other people maybe aren't noticing, so I don't really know. Yeah, people yeah, close to him can't exciting. see it. I guess it's just our main characters that can see it. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> and Larry. And mother Nick Abigail. Don't want, and Frank. Nick don't want nothing to do with them. Uh oh, I hear bells. I think my blown out doggy's back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, are you blown out? You look the same. Oh, she smells. She smells good too. She's happy running around. Anyway, not right now. I'm podcasting. Um, we have all day to run around the yard. Uh, anyway, yeah, hold on. Does she know the word podcast? 
<laughs> I was talking to Michelle when I said I'm that. kidding. <laughs> but if she doesn't, so she's going to have to learn it, right? <laughs> um, We're talking about Harold. Yeah, I'm scrolling through. Um, I'm the Abigail. I like Lucy. I gotta tell you, I hope uh, she sticks around for a little while. Yeah. Um, I don't remember her. So, uh, should <clears throat> I guess the only thing really left is the committee and all that, right? Am I forgetting anything? I don't. Know. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. So, um, I don't, I kind of like, I don't know how I feel about what they, sending uh, Tom out there. I don't know how I feel about that. I just think their arguments. I respect their arguments. I I don't know if I can see Nick doing that to Tom. I was going to say, I trust Nick's decision making. So if he has come to that decision, it's for a reason, a good reason. Yeah. I just don't think any of it is going to go well. well I think, it may be I for a good reason, but it. send someone else to die. What the fuck? Like they, they, they don't think these people are coming back. They all mentioned it. How it's probably unlikely. So send somebody else. Like Franny said, yeah. send Franny. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> If if everyone is saying these people might not come back, probably won't come back. If you're sitting there, like if they're going there to get intelligence, but you're not expecting them to come back and they have no way of getting that intelligence back to you because the telephone lines aren't working. What is the point? Yeah, that's very true. I was thinking that. Like, why send them out there if you don't think they're coming back? Because that's... <laughs> you're not going to know anything. Yeah. Like, I mean, they I... clearly, like, Nick, part of Nick's plan is to put Tom under hypnosis, quote unquote, when he comes back to find out what happened. So right. he does think he's coming back. I mean, he's putting a lot of stock well, in that hypnosis. Think... <laughs> I think if anyone is going to come back, I think it will be Tom. Which, in a way, is why he should be sent. Like, he has the best chance of coming back, which is weird. I hear all the arguments. I don't know. I, I kind of like Nick a little less for this. I, also, I, I stand I with Nick. <laughs> I stand with Nick. I stand with Franny. I don't even like saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I like how she... I mean, I, I agree with her because they should be unilateral, but she was immediately like, all right, I, I've changed my mind. Never mind. <laughs> Right, so that's what I had yeah, to say. I so now I'm going to vote with you guys anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Which you know, honestly, it, it I, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that because it's like you said your opinion, but for the good of the team, you want to be together, which is right. fine. <laughs> if we're going to kill them, we all have to kill them. You can't come back and say I told you so. There's not going to be any of that. <laughs> I don't uh, even think they should tell the like they don't need to tell anyone else about the plan. Yeah. Who, who do we got? Dana and Tom and the judge. Who the judge? Uh, yeah. So we got an old guy, a Phoebe, I think is how they put it, and a uh, was there anything? No, Dana's just normal, right? Yeah. Uh, did you notice that the judge's name is Richard Ferris? I did not notice that. Isn't that one of his names? I I know Fanning. I'm not sure Ferris, but it feels like it oh. should be right. Yeah. I have it written down, but would you say, Alan? Are you talking about Tower? Yeah. Well, RF, Randall Flag, Richard Fanning. Uh, yeah. Isn't it Farson in there? John is John Farson in the town. Anything R? He takes just about. Can he he should have just made Farson flag and done like Richard Farson. <laughs> I, I agree. See, that would have made sense. That would have been much less confusing at least. Because that that actually, you're right. That would have made sense because that's what flag does. The things that Farson was doing, that's what flag does. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Let's tell him to go back and rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, he must have been drinking a lot that night. He decided to make them the same person. I still, I like, I like this character as he stands alone as the bad guy. I don't want him being part of the tower. Exactly. But I went back to my list: Richard Fry, Randall Flag, Robert Frank, Ramsey Forrest. <laughs> everything but that so far. Right? <laughs> No Richard Farris and Nope. There's Ronnie Farris and Richard Farrington. Um did the, Yeah, so I was just saying, did the flag part of that come first? Because he got flagged from that store, right? Yeah, that was the first name, flag, because of the store. That's, That's why it has two G's, because the store has two G's. Yeah. So did all of RF come from that store? Well, yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a word, kind of. They yeah, came so- from that idea, so. Uh, they're very, very polit- they're, they're, they're turning into the uh, society. They're trying so hard to avoid repeating. Mm-hmm. How, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, well, we're an ad hoc committee. We don't want to be in charge. We're going to be in charge. Well, well, we're sending people off to die maybe but what other choice do we have like oh well that's politics i guess that's what we gotta do like like you were spending a lot of time saying you're gonna do things different and then you're like i don't necessarily think they said they were gonna do it different because the first thing that like who was it someone glenn or Stu, i don't remember was like you can't just assume that people are gonna follow the law because there is no law like and people are going to realize that eventually. So, like, they're trying to recreate a society that they had before. Yeah, because Glenn's telling them, like, we need to get this shit going before they realize they can do whatever the hell they want. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then Harold has a moment. He's like, wait a minute. There is no society. And, like, he has a moment where he realizes that. I'm like, oh, oh, don't just, what does that mean? <laughs> Harold's very, very... Uh... Scary. Yeah, and it's not quite the word I'm looking for, but very. He's he's on uh, on a tightrope all of a sudden, and then it's pulled very tight and getting pulled tighter. Or something I feel like he's going to snap here. Like he went from just kind of annoying and like a stupid, jealous little kid to dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Um, he's making his choices. He's like, I guess there's you can't blame Flag for how much as I tried. <laughs> you can kind of blame Flag for Nadine, but even she's got her choices. He's almost like just took advantage of the situation. Remember, wasn't it at the beginning he was just like a normal like criminal guy, and then all of a sudden he became this the plague hit, and he became like the super devil. He's kind of like a conduit almost. Like he's just taking people who are already bad and amplifying them to be even. Uh, that's a good word. He's like an amplifier. I don't know what his what's what's his end game to kill to kill the people in Boulder and then what? Do we know? I mean, is there? It's, I mean, this this is supposedly all the people left in the world, right? In these two well, camps. Flex. Wait, what? I'm sorry. What did you just say? What, what's flag then game? He. So I did write that down. Um, I don't remember what context that was in, but I wrote down that he is anti-creation. So his end game is to uncreate everything that <sighs> the good has created. <laughs> and like rule the darkness. Is that what we're gonna say? I don't know about that. Um. Well, so that's here, like... Hold on. I found the paragraph. It says. It's Mother Abigail. So she says, God the creator made blah, 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 created. The black man wanted was able only to unshape. Antichrist? You might as well say anti-creation. Yeah. I don't... (sighs) Okay. So So he's trying to destroy everything further, but to what end? Just going to rule people in Vegas and live happily ever after? I guess. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I this was kind of the thing with the Crimson King, too, in which, like, he wanted 
Todash Darkness to rule all, but Todash Darkness is nothing. Yeah. Is it doesn't it's feel like the a place destruction can, of everything. It's not a place that can be ruled necessarily. It's uh yeah, I don't even think the Crimson King would want to be there. Right. Yeah, I always had a problem. What about the like mid-level soldier that works for the king? Does he think he's going to get something good out of this deal? <laughs> the middle manager. Uh. Yeah. So he's amplifying Harold, I guess you could say, but Harold's just I was just an like an immature brat who doesn't know how to react emotionally and I think it's gonna make him I think clearly it's gonna make him do something. I don't know what that is, but like we I feel like we're winding him up. Uh and it's getting like bad quick. <laughs> yeah, like I, feel he... like, I mean, I know we still have roughly <laughs> <laughs> Five, six hundred people. A lot of books left, but I feel like everything is going to come to. I, and this always happens with this book because it's big build up and then everything happens really quickly over a span of like 100 pages. <laughs> uh, no comment. Um, <laughs> either confirm nor deny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it, yeah, it's probably the way that's going to go. I mean, it's it, 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 I never really understood that because because you're when you're writing the action, like I understand that the action doesn't take long to write, but like when he's you know building up, he spends a lot of time in people's minds, and like why doesn't he do that when he's writing the action? I guess is what I would say, and that would like spread it out a little bit. Or maybe he just doesn't care. Yeah, but here's what it is. <laughs> Like, like, you know, like when he has conversations with people, like you spend a lot of time with them talking to themselves before they say it out loud. Like, I, I love the way he does that. Also, <laughs> besides the book, it a lot of the action in his books is usually like most of it is at the end, and so I feel like at that point he's like, okay, and now it's done, and it's over, and goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds a lot was kind of like the whole like they were getting the team together the whole time. I agree. Well, Salem uh, Bot is also one of the scarier books, I would say. <laughs> I mean, not, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I was actually, I was thinking Pet Cemetery when you said that. Um, yeah. Uh, Salem Bot is scary. Not written scary, but in, the, in, the, if you actually think about it, it's like, holy crap, that was awful. The whole oh, town is vampires. It's terrifying, but that, even yeah. that one is a good example of, like, a slow burn. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, yeah. But, it, uh, <laughs> Kind of a slow burn, yeah. In the fact that they're getting the team together, basically the whole book, and then the team gets decimated before it really does anything. It's not, yeah. There's definitely like a lot. There are violent. There's violence throughout, obviously, because it has to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, but people are dying the entire time. They're getting the team together too. I, mean, I would actually say yeah. Salem's Lot is probably like an anomaly for him. It's not. It's actually not that like rushed. Yeah, that was before you know. <laughs> Uh, he became, Coke? you know, this is right after, this is right after Carrie, so oh, before, okay. before he got his uh, his business model down necessarily. <laughs> I like sound plot. Fucking Barlow showed up in her kitchen. I was like, Would you people get the fuck out of here and leave me alone? <laughs> but he, they usually don't confront directly like that in his books. Yeah, Salem, yeah. Salem, you're right. Salem's lot is pretty creepy the entire time. It's just like a yeah. The whole tone of that is like nothing else I've seen. Like the man and the boy, <laughs> like the prologue when they're in Florida and they're. I think they read about vampires in New England again. They're like fuck, we gotta go back. Because <laughs> well, they always stay in New England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they can't take a train or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> uh, I want that story where they go back. Yeah. Yeah. Assuming Callahan isn't there because he's on a bridge somewhere in a different universe fighting different vampires. But like what so what happens when they go back? Cuz clearly it didn't the, the, the events that happened in the book didn't hold and well, you know. Well, no, I guess they don't go to don't they isn't no, it's not the same place because when when in the dark or they have to go near that town because there's like the 
whatever that thing is called i can't remember the the like the fuzzy area or whatever the finnies it's not a thinny it's like a place where dead people can come through I, like i don't remember uh, what yeah, I... they called it but it was around <sighs> there yeah, um, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember it. <laughs> but I think it was in Maine because... Well, wait, is Salem's Lot in Maine? I don't even know. Yeah, it was like near a bridge or something. Yeah. They kept crossing back and forth. But anyway. Maybe, maybe the Brooklyn Bridge? I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, anyway. I, I'd like to see that. I don't know how we got there, but... So the book, you know, starts with them having to go back, and then they talk about what happened in the book. Like, well, geez. What happened when they went back? I guess he never got there. <laughs> Probably forgot he even said that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's well, like, I was busy you... writing a hundred other books. What were you I... doing? <laughs> I don't remember, Ed, if it was you that sent this or if I saw it online somewhere, but someone asked, like, are you ever going to write a sequel to... Um, Oh yeah, Salem Lot, and he was like, "Well, I mean, if you read the Tower, that is kind of a continuation." <sighs> kind of. I mean, that's why that's what I was saying. It'd be hard to do a sequel now because you'd have to leave Callahan out of it, basically. Is that what he meant? He, that Callahan is the continuation of it. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I guess he's not wrong. But when you read Salem's Lot, Callahan is such a nothing. It's like, ooh, that guy. Well, and Callahan just, he disappears. He goes away. That's what I mean. So it's, it's not like you would need to bring him back to an actual sequel of Salem's oh. Lot. That would mostly be following Mark and... Petrie. Or no, Mark Petrie and uh, Ben. Ben, yeah. Ben, thank you. I was like, I can't remember the man's name. <laughs> Maybe that's his... And Mears. Maybe that's King's way of saying, like, nah, I, I'm not interested. <laughs> Well, he doesn't do sequels right away, so he'd have to wait till Mark is like fifty and then do a sequel. <laughs> and then Mark like has to go with the young boy. <laughs> right. Yeah, then Mark has to become Ben. <laughs> like the shining and uh what was the other sequel he did? <laughs> Forgot. Anyway. Um so are those are three people, the judge, Nadine and um uh, and new character uh, Dana, who um, about. <laughs> yeah, not Nadine. Sorry, Dana. Yeah, I don't. Just, yeah, she was just like, I know she'd go. Like, wait, I thought you liked her. Why? Are you, I don't understand why you would not. If they said, who would you nominate? I would say, fucking nobody. I'm not helping you with pick <laughs> that. I guess they. To me, that says they really truly believe that they are gonna make it. But even though they realize that that's stupid to think that, I don't know. What does Mother Abigail say about this plan? Does she know? I don't Probably. think they consulted her. I think that's going to be one of the next sections. <laughs> we have a meeting about the meeting we had about the meeting. I know. There's a lot of this stuff. Like It's cool because you're seeing a very small glimpse into like, oh yeah, this is what you would have to do if you had to rebuild a society. But it's also like, I don't care. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's kind of amazing the way he's like, how many people did he have to talk to to figure it to like think about all, right. all this stuff that you would have to do? I mean, I guess it's like, not that it's like informative, but it is kind of like, all right, I guess I would have a little bit of a plan. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, so that's how it would happen. Oh, wait a minute. He made that up. Like, sitting on his bench staring at the uh, dairy standpipe. Right. Like, and how, I'm sorry, but, like, isn't that boring as hell to write, too? Like, that's, like, it's like writing an outline for a paper. <laughs> I mean, not once you get it. Not the way he did it, where it was, like, a conversational situation. Like, he didn't sit there with Glenn drafting the actual paperwork, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, uh, this is what he came up with. So, maybe that part. I, I feel like he talked to somebody who told him, well, you would need one of these and one of those and one of them. He's like, all right, got it. I'll be right back. I agree, yeah. He always, you have to check his thanks to the people he thanks because that usually tells you mm -hmm. what parts he was struggling with. I've, I mean, I've listened to a lot of the speeches that he has or that are on YouTube of him at like colleges and libraries and stuff. And he's talked about like he definitely consults a lot for 
like I, I, I specifically remember him mentioning the stand and Gerald's game. <laughs> I remember Pet Cemetery, the, the whole victim. Al, you haven't read that, right? No, not yet. The, the whole Victor Pascal part, uh, <laughs> like he had to consult doctors and morticians and stuff, and he was asking them about it because it's the accident at the beginning. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, he doesn't, I guess, you know, he doesn't let facts get away a good story. Don't ever forget that, but he does consult. That's why it's so confusing because I never know what's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's all true on some level of the tower it's always true um, so I think that's where we leave and they all vote 7 to nothing on everything it's like why did they even bother they should have just said hey uh, I mean I think it's important to do the process you can't just assume everything is democracy the best are we going capitalism here is that where we're going I'm not sure that's the best answer I'm thinking more of a socialism no money situation. Everybody has a skill, like the old days. Mm-hmm. And where's the guy who knows to run the generators? Because that's going to be important. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it was now, there would be a lot of solar powered stuff. So a lot of it could just get back up by itself. I don't know about 1990s. But... Anyway, we good? Is that the oh I didn't know that was the end. That was the end. Uh, we have the meeting and we decide who to kill and then uh, yeah. we don't know what happens next. I almost said my life for you thinking of Tom, but I was like, no wait, that's trash can then. My M O O N that spells my life for you. Right. <laughs> this is a, um all right. And another podcast. Everybody say bye. 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 bye.